Hello, my name is Mike Slynn. I'd like to show you a project that I've been working on these last few months involving importing uh, WSDL from web services and generating value objects and references. Uh, Flex Builder 3, Flash Builder 4 have this sort of facility built in, but it isn't suitable for my client's purpose and uh, it may not be suitable for many other service centric, uh, schema centric rather, um, web services. So let's just take a look at the application. This is an Air application. Um, it runs from a configuration file which I've previously prepared. And uh, here it is. You can see that there are nine web services. Um, I have uh, hidden their names to protect the uh, confidentiality trade secrets of my client. Um, and these web services are actually running from a number of schemas, some of which are shared between them. So the two which are called Bam Bam and Pebbles here, uh, well Bam Bam is common to all of them, all of the services, and Pebbles is uh, common, is used by a number of these as well. Uh, there's an interesting diagram which can show the relationship of schemas to services, but essentially um, uh, there's a database and the database uh, exposes itself to the web as a number of uh, web services and the schemas uh, that uh, define the tables for the the database um, some of the some of the tables are common for all of the web services so instead of the flex builder 3 or flash builder 4 service centric web services um, this approach here uses schemas. So we're going to generate value objects and references to those value objects for different schemas as opposed to web service. So basically the idea here is let's take a look at a web service. It's got a name which I assigned um, and it, uh, it has a bunch of, uh, of um, types. So let's take a look at the types. You can see that Bam Bam has all these types here, and Dino has those types. Um, so these are two different schemas, and both of these schemas together contribute different value objects. We can test to see if it's valid, um, and we would get an indication if it was online or not. I can test all of them, and basically it, in that way, build up a shared schema that's current according to the definitions at this moment, and uh, once that's complete, and it is, it doesn't take all that long to read in all the WSDL and parse it, I can then do um, several different actions. One is I can generate some value objects, and uh, again, that doesn't take very long. Here it's creating, uh, writing all the value objects for all of the schemas into a directory. There it's done. And then we can generate some references to that so that we can guarantee that all of these value objects are actually packaged up into the SWIFT. As you may know, uh, by default, um, uh, Flex doesn't include everything in a library. And if you wanted to generate something that you could hand over as a library to another a coworker, uh, you may find uh, if you don't have references to everything that it doesn't work. Uh, let's take a look at some of the classes that it generates. Um, as you can see, for all of the different types that were listed, it just generates a reference, a little variable. It's not used. It doesn't take very much space at all, just a few bytes per reference. But this little magic um, class guarantees that if you reference the class, that all the types in it also get referenced. And it also generates value objects that look very much like uh, the regular value objects you get from um, from Flex. Here's a collection type that was generated and you can see that it basically inherits from array collection and um, it has all the kinds of add, remove, all the CRUD features that you've come to expect. Thank you very much. You can learn more at my website, mslin.com.